Hey, what's up guys? It's Thomas here and recently there's been a bunch of requests for more stories from back in the day. The rock and roll stories. And whilst there's a bunch to select from, I think the one I'm going to tell you today is pretty damn funny. Certainly looking back on it and it involves Steve Vai, Interscope Records and the management team and one hell of an awkward situation. The last time I released a video about me and Steve Vai and, and, and all that stuff, why I hacked his guitar, there was a lot of comments like, how could you hack Steve Vai's guitar? Why would you do this and how could you do this? Well, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some photos that show Steve Vai was just as happy hacking into my guitars as I was his. We were as bad as each other, let me tell you. So with that being said, let's get on with the story. So back in the 90s, I had a record deal with Interscope Records. And as part of this whole thing, the band Bad For Good was formed. Uh, later on, Steve Vai would come on as the producer of the band. He would produce the record Refugee. And also, um, he'd have like a, a stylistic overview of the band. Cue some tasty clothes. What? So the record Refugee had a single to launch the album. It was a Thin Lizzy cover. It was called 19. Great original track. I mean, Thin Lizzy, you know, one of the first songs I ever learned on guitar was The Boys Are Back In Town. So I was always a big fan of Thin Lizzy. So I thought this was a great choice. With 19 being pretty much the launch song for the band, Interscope wanted to release a, a music video uh, to play on channels like MTV and stuff like that. Remember MTV? This was like a pretty full on production. Um, um, we shot that video like from early in the morning to last thing at night. But in order to get to that point, we needed some good solid rehearsal time. And we were rehearsing at a place called Mates. This rehearsal space, you'd walk out and there'd be bands like Metallica rehearsing there. All these upcoming bands and massively established bands. It was just like the place to be when it came to rehearsing for large shows. So Steve I had been running us all through our moves and you know getting us you know to try different things for the, the, the sort of the big day when we would be shooting this video. And at some point in a scope and the management team they all wanted to come and check in and make sure that we were going to be ready to shoot this music video. So the big day arrives and with all the formalities out the way the record label guys and the management they're all sitting on the couch. Steve I's on his separate chair almost like the director because he needs to be he needs to be closer to the action. So it was time to run through the song so they can get a sort of preview as to what the video was going to be like. Brooks is absolutely just slamming it down. Danny's got the mic and he's doing all the faces. He's screaming. Zach Young's, you know, he's looking cool and he's pedaling the bass line. And it's coming up to my guitar solo, the bit where I kind of spin around and I jump in and the shred, you know, it just kicks off, right? It's the, it's the big shred moment. Bear in mind, as I was growing up, I was really into bands like David Lee Roth and Steve I was such a big part of that and all the crazy guitar moves, you know, that was, in my mind, absolutely awesome. So it comes up to the part where I'm spinning around and I'm about to go my guitar solo and on this day, <laughs> Kind of spinning around like that. The timing. I thought I'd throw in a little bit of extra razzle dazzle and really impress this the record label and the management team. So I get ready to, to go into my guitar part. I spins around and then I threw the guitar around my neck and I got into this powerful stance ready to go. Well, that maybe is, is how it went down in my mind. But what actually happened was I went hard and I threw the guitar to go around my neck and the guitar. <laughs> went straight through the wall and the headstock came through the other side of the bathroom wall. It was like I shot it with 300 miles an hour velocity. It just went straight through the wall and it stayed. I mean, it just led to the most awkward few seconds of silence. Like, oh, <laughs> what just happened? I wish I had a picture of this guitar just straight through the plaster wall, just sat in there like somebody had shot it out of a cannon. The video that we made I think is still on YouTube somewhere. It's called 19 by Bad For Good and uh, basically it's like a young band goes into a rehearsal space, they're rocking out, they're going absolutely crazy and they're kind of making a mockery of these then glam rock bands which is kind of ironic actually because Bad For Good had a little bit too much glamness about it really for that time. But that's another story for another time. If you've ever struggled with playing the guitar fast and I mean with blazing pace, power and dexterity on that fretboard just absolutely ripping around the neck, 
then check out the latest School of McRock lesson, How to Play Fast. In this lesson, I give you a ton of insights as well as some licks and exercises to do, which means you'll be able to play with that speed and power that you've always wanted. Check it out now on schoolofmcrock.com where every week I release a brand new lesson. For now, I promise you some pictures of Steve Vai cutting up my guitar. Let's go, let's see them. This is kind of strange because I'm just looking at the wall. I'm not looking at anything in particular. I'm just looking and nodding. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye.